Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. We're gonna start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. Stick a fork in me, I'm done. <laughs> oh Ouch. no! There we go. Wonderful! So, what have we got for you this week? Well, it uh, this has been a uh, another bug fix tacular week, but with some cool additions. So let's jump right into it. The first thing is the <laughs> kind of minor, but I know some folks have been waiting to play with them. Uh, all of the primitives that I showed off a couple devlogs ago are now in the game. They have been painstakingly <laughs> loaded into the item spawner. It is such a pain to get like 30 uh, new things in there. Um, these can also be spawn locked as well. So if you just want to duplicate them out and build, I'm not even going to ask, but I'm terrified thinking about what you all will make. Um, their masses have all been adjusted to be a little more proportional uh, as well. Uh, so the small one is actually lighter and such. Um, but they're all in here and make a colossal racket messing around with. The, uh, the more important thing, which we're gonna pull out our toolbox to play with this, is that this is the first, well, not really the first, but an expansion of uh, a set of items that really are only convenient to spawn and work with using the toolbox and our portable item spawner. So remember, if you're just a review, if you haven't played with the toolbox yet, it can be found under the spawn tool section of your wrist menu in scenes that support it. There's some tool guns here. I think there's, yep, there's some tool guns in here. Uh, and there are tool panels on the top. This one, the orange one, is our portable item spawner. We pull the stylus out of it, and then we can select items to spawn uh, in place in the world. The set that we're gonna be playing with today is under barriers. In addition to our sort of like IPSC style see-through barriers, we now have a set of shoot house walls. This, this is very experimental. In fact, I'm going to move this out of the way for a number of reasons. This is, and it's one of the reasons why we're on the experimental branch for this. This is the first item that I am letting you spawn that has the environment tag in it. Meaning that if I spawn a wall here and I'm an arm swinger here and I run up to this, this wall actually stops me. Also, this wall has, you can't see it, but it has a hidden, uh, what's called nav mesh carver in it, so that it is actually carving the invisible space that determines whether a bot can move one place or another. If we then grab, let's move you out of the way and put you back in there. So that means, um, and this took some modification to, uh, this was actually brought up by a uh, modder. I think it was Andrew who mentioned that they were trying to make some environment objects and then tractor wouldn't work because the way tractor works is that it basically box casts against the world so that it stops objects when you go to place them. This doesn't work if the object is also the environment and basically what would happen is the object would just zoom right up to the tip of tractor. I don't know. Oh, I think we actually accidentally. Ooh, can we? Uh, you know, I don't think I've actually. Boop. Yep. Totally can. Neat. Anyway, I lost my track of thought. Uh, but anyway, I had to modify the way tractor worked this week so that we can actually move objects that are an environment object. Obviously, if you're in locomotion, don't move them into yourself. Uh, or maybe uh, I definitely recommend if you're trying to like build complex things with these, it might be worth being in teleport mode or dash because walls don't stop you in that locomotion mode. But anyway, yeah, so we've got a set of walls now with the ability, like if I actually placed this here, bots would both not be able to see through this and they wouldn't be able to path from this room to this room because it's actually carving up the nav mesh. Another thing to be, well, I'll cover that later. <laughs> so yeah, so um, do, 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 select one of these, mm. grab one of these, grab one of these. Mm. Um, Ooh, you know what? In fact, I just realized we can probably demonstrate this by moving you over here and then moving you. Oh, the box cast 
That's the problem with moving large objects with environment stuff, is that the box cast basically casts against those walls. There we go, and get that into place. Beautiful. Uh, so, uh, given that, if I then spawn a... I am just a mess today. There we go. If we spawn a, a rot wiener, like a rot, that is set to wander, spawn activated. Um, I believe it should see us and try to, I believe I need to, oops, player IFF, enemy of bots, and this, this rot shouldn't be able to get to me. It'll try. Yep. But its path is blocked. And it isn't gonna notice how it isn't trying to actually glitch through the wall. It's just very mad that it cannot get closer to us. Oh, it's getting it's getting real upset. Oh, and we've blocked our ability to spawn. Here we go. Select held type. Oh. Man, I am, as I said, just a mess today. I don't know where I put my magazine. You, you, you still in there, buddy? Is he dead? Yep, I think that did it. Wonderful. So there you have a demonstration of this wall and window working. Oh, uh, but yeah, so the fact that they are environment pieces well, it means we can actually do some other cool things with them. Let's grab... Come on, give me my... Oh, my tractor's in my pocket. There we go. We can turn on Rotato here. We can rotate this down like that. And then pull it over here. And we can totally make ourselves a ramp if we want. Yeah, there we go. Do, 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 do. Get you out of the way. There we go. Beautiful. What are you... There we go. We just need to get a little closer. And boom. And now we have a ramp that we can actually walk on. So my intention is to eventually put a whole bunch more sort of big primitive environment chunk pieces uh, into the game. Um, but the, this, it seemed, especially because so many people have been wanting to be able to set up their own shoot houses, it made sense to start with this as a set of objects first, um, because I mean, if I give you just a flat sheet like this, people, I'm sure someone, but next week someone will be like, hey Anton, I built an entire pirate ship with them. And I'll be like, wow, awesome. Uh, <laughs> But there you have it. Those are those are going to be in and the whole point of as I said to put this on the uh, Experimental build is that I'm sure there's a bunch of contexts and ways that this breaks and I want to know what they are And so I want you folks to play with them and then fill up my bug report section you know, on the steam forum and the discord to uh, yeah And we can get to work Improving all of this Wonderful. Oh, another thing you may have noticed, I have finally, one of the other big things that was fixed this week uh, is that the pagination is finally correct on the item spawner. It shows the correct numbers and it actually hides the numbers um, correctly, showing you whether you have a next or a previous page. I seem to have finally fixed all the little bugs in this. I actually ended up just copying some code over from that sucker there where I did all of this correctly instead of here where I clearly did not. So it is fixed source. Anywho. Yo, out of VR. Other important things uh, with this update, I uh, actually fixed the Carl Gustav rear latch so it actually rotates correctly. When someone had told me that they had seen it, that it was clipping, I was looking in the wrong place. So I fixed it partially, but didn't send it far enough. Um, the flaccid serpent Sosigs now correctly spawn in the Sosig spawner. Uh, the CBGA MS had still had a metadata error left over from when I did the cartridge conversion. It should now be fixed, but if you saved any copies of that gun in your vault, you may need to just delete them and remake that gun. Um, 
fixed some just a whole bunch of other errant metadata. The Carl Gustav Alum shell should now no longer blow itself up uh, when it explodes. Um, yeah, and just some uh, some just some assorted minor fixes here and there. An important thing to talk about involving these new environment pieces. Um, because I know some folks are going to look at them and be like, oh, does this mean that I can build a, a huge entire level uh, with complex SOSIG, SOSIG navigation, multiple floors, etc.? And so I need to temper expectations. Because of the way that the nav mesh works in game, in Unity, the nav mesh is basically baked by me at edit time in a level. And then the only way that I can change it dynamically via placing an object is what's called carving. So basically something can subtract from the nav mesh and block off an area, but it cannot add it. Meaning you cannot add a floor that a SOSIG can walk on or a ramp that a SOSIG can go up. All you can do is cut away at the surface that is already determined in that level for them to be able to navigate. And that's not something I can do anything about. Um, it's just the way nav mesh works in this older version of Unity. And they were in the process of, re uh, you know, replacing it with a, with a runtime nav mesh, but uh, they never finished it. And the version of it that still works in 5.6 has all sorts of fun crashing errors that only happen in builds. So I tried actually switching to it like two or three years ago and ran into so many problems I had to abandon it. So we are stuck with what we have with it. Um, and the other thing to be aware of is that each and every one of these nav mesh carvers, because of the way that it is cutting apart the nav mesh in real time, um, is not the most efficient at it. What this basically means is that if you make a regular size shoot house in the warehouse scene, let's say, the SOSIG should still be able to path through it fairly efficiently, fairly optimally. If you build a realistic recreation at full size of your, you know, city block out of them <laughs> in a random scene, the nav mesh will be something like, 50 times the complexity of the average nav mesh in an H3 scene and fairly inefficient. And what that will basically mean is that you will see more and more instances of bots um, failing to be able to path super long distances or they can get lost part of the way or just increased performance costs. So just something to be aware of that when you're trying to make, if you do decide to use these for making sort of like a combat scenario, with SOSIGs, it's important to not be too maximalist with it, um, sort of thing. And we'll find out where the limits are together in this process. When you've got so many different factors sort of meshing together, when it comes to a performance concern, it can be very difficult to know exactly where the limits are, because in a simpler scene, the limit might be here, and in a complex scene, it might be here because there are other costs. So, but just something to be aware of that, like, I'm giving you a very powerful tool with this that normally in the past, I kind of wouldn't because I would have been afraid of performance concerns, but it's something that folks really want. And I know a lot of modder folk also want to add in sort of like environment kitty kind of stuff. So I figured it would be important to have a reference implementation of that inside H3 that people can model off of and copy and that the tools work really well with it. And I'll still add some things into it. Um, but it's still the sort of case that if your vision in playing H3 is like, I would really love to have a completely custom sort of big environment the way to do that is still to actually make a custom level with the wonderful mod tools uh, that the mod scene has created uh, using the Unity editor. And that this is still about inserting content into a level. And I hope that I hope that delineation is clear to folks. Whew, that just about does it. Sorry, I look so disheveled and greasy today, by the way. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things uh, you'll be have Those of you who have <sighs> heard me like wheeze into all of my microphones for especially the past like four years, it has not been your imagination. I get out of breath very, very easily because I'm fat and I'm really, really, really out of shape, especially from just sitting in this chair for years working on this game and eating sausages instead of, you know, anything else. 
<laughs> and uh, it's it's only been recently in my life that I finally hit the point where it was like, I better do something about that or I'm going to die real young. And so I'm working out every day, which is why I look like a grease ball right now. And basically while this video and build uploads, I'm going to go back over and sweat on my recumbent bike again until I feel like I'm going to vomit and then I'm going to lay on the floor on my side for like 20 minutes and feel like a giant ball of mush uh, and feel terrible about it. But hopefully I can get to another place so I can remain alive for many years and make stupid games for you all. Uh, and with that, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you soon. Peace.